What is an atomic bomb? How is it possible that a weapon nearly the size of an SUV can undoubtedly be the leading cause of human extinction? I'm sure most of us had similar questions at some point. August 6, 1945 marks one of the most iconic historical moment of all time. This highly advanced plane at the time deploys from the island of Tinian to launch an attack that no one saw coming. Enola Gay is a Boeing B-29 Superfortress bomber named after the pilot's mother. This plane is about 30 meters in length, or 99 feet, with a wingspan of 43 meters, or 141 feet. Thanks to the four propellers powering this aircraft, it was a very capable war machine made to utilize bomb storage and able to reach a max speed of 575 kilometers per hour or 357 miles per hour. The B-29 was not only great for nuke delivery, but was mounted with five turrets for defensive operation. Under the fuselage are the bomb bay doors. It can carry up to nine tons or 20,000 pounds of bombs. This is where the little boy was stored before being dropped. The development of nuclear weapons is a lengthy and intricate procedure. Let's take a look at how it works. At the back is the box tail fins to stabilize the bomb. It's crucial for the body to point downwards when dropped because at the front lies the radar altimeter. If a nuclear bomb directly hits the land before detonation, the blast range is reduced since most of it gets absorbed below the ground level. To maximize the destruction, the blast needs to be at a certain height. These radar systems make that calculation before sending signals. Let's take a look inside to understand the mechanism. The primers are ignited after receiving the signals from the altimeter. This sets off the propellant, delivering a great force pushing the projectile as fast as 300 meters per second across the barrel. Note, this is uranium-235 on its way to insert into the target ring and make contact with these four polonium at the very end. We've now reached the part where nuclear fission occurs. Uranium becomes unstable upon impact with a neutron, leading to its nuclei to split into more fragments with heat and energy. This division causes additional neutrons to be released, initiating a chain reaction. The rapid unstable reaction is a lot faster than the time it takes for the human brain to process and causes the massive explosion. We've learned the basics of how one of the first atomic bombs worked, but this may bring up the question, why was such power necessary to mankind? What exactly motivated the scientists to invent such a thing? In December 1938, over Christmas vacation, Otto Hahn, Fritz Strassmann, and physicists Lisa Meitner, along with Otto Robert Frisch, made a discovery of nuclear fission in the Berlin laboratory. They realized that splitting the uranium nucleus into two releases huge amounts of energy. When Albert Einstein feared that the Nazis might succeed in making such deadly weapons out of uranium, he wrote his concerns to Franklin Roosevelt. Roosevelt approved the creation of an atomic bomb. On November 26, 1941, the Japanese fleet started their journey with aircraft carriers, carrying hundreds of planes on board. Their goal was to attack the U.S. Navy on Pearl Harbor. December 7, 1941 is the day when thousands of lives were lost by a surprise attack from Japan. The devastating destruction has led to the declaration of war between the United States and Japan. On August 13, 1942, the Manhattan Project was launched with support from Canada and the United Kingdom. It was a top-secret project by the U.S. government to be the first country to develop a nuclear superweapon before Germany. Robert J. Oppenheimer was recruited to work on the Manhattan Project. Just a year later, he became the director of the project's Los Alamos Laboratory in New Mexico. The world's first nuclear explosion by the codename Trinity Test occurred on July 16, 1945. It was a success. The U.S. has become the first country to create a nuclear bomb. Oppenheimer, who's often called the father of the atomic bombs, fought to discontinue any further developments of these weapons later in his life after World War II. 
On May 7, 1945, Nazi Germany surrendered after Hitler was defeated. The only ongoing war was with Japan during that point. To bring an end to World War II, the U.S. had to think strategically since going all out with Japan could only cost more lives and resources without any promising outcome. Their answer was the atomic bomb. A single deadly bomb being dropped from a plane meant that the U.S. will deal with no casualties, while their opponents are at total disadvantages. On July 26, 1945, United States President Harry S. Truman, United Kingdom Prime Minister Winston Churchill, and Chairman of China Chiang Kai-shek issued the Potsdam Declaration. The Potsdam Declaration was a statement that demanded the Japanese government to surrender unconditionally. The ultimatum stated that if the Japanese did not surrender, they would face prompt and utter destruction. The Japanese government did not reply to the statement. Hiroshima and Nagasaki were the targets of two atomic bombs dropped by the United States on Japan. Fat Man was the second nuclear bomb produced during the Manhattan Project. It's a lot heavier and has shaped charge design instead of the gun type design like the Little Boy. Both of these weapons were dropped by the B-29 but were named uniquely. As mentioned before, the Enola Gay carried Little Boy while the Fat Man was let go off using a boxcar, which was named after the pilot. On August 6, 1945, the city of Hiroshima in the southwestern part of Japan was hit with Little Boy. The atomic weapon exploded about 600 meters above the city, unleashing a massive amount of devastating force in an instant. Everyone within the radius of 0.2 kilometers or 0.1 miles have perished without any pain. That's about 70,000 people. The structures were completely wiped off. Severe damages are around 2.2 kilometers, or 1.4 miles, where most buildings collapse due to shock waves, and anyone who is directly exposed to the fireball gets third-degree burns. People who managed to survive within this zone have likely died in the weeks and months that followed as a result of radiation poisoning. Moderate damage zones extend to the radius of 4.3 kilometers, or 2.7 miles, where radiation poisoning is still very likely along with structural damages. Everyone beyond the radius of 5.5 kilometers or 3.4 miles dealt with the least casualties. Three days later after the bombing on Hiroshima, Nagasaki was up next with the same fate, except that it was 1.4 times more deadly. What do you guys think? Did United States make the right decision to attack Japan with a nuclear weapon? Or could they have ended the war differently? Let me know what you guys think in the comments.